We're live. I'm just now seeing the uh, chat here. I guess we'll make sure that uh, we're coming in loud and clear. New phone. My other phone died. So you guys let me know um, that everything's working here before we get too far. If I can't tell on my end. So I'll make sure before we talk, start talking about too many things here. Now that I've got anything particular to talk about, just... Let's see. This guy, Andrew, says we're all good. So we got one vote for everything's all good. Whew, what a day. I'm ready for it to be over. Audio 5.9, video 5.9. Is that 5 out of 9? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyhow... I guess uh, the general consensus is we're all good. So I was doing this on my PC, but then my, my webcam broke there. So ended up just kind of doing it on the phone here. Don't do it on the Insty. Video's a little washed out. It's probably the lighting more than anything. I think I wiped, I wiped off the camera here. Let me, uh, probably should have prepared a little better for this, but I'm more of a wing it type guy, I guess. Let me see if it's, that's the camera. I can give her a little one of those. Give her a little what's up. I don't know, maybe that's just the way it is. So, you have an angry Jeep in the background. <laughs> it should be angry because it needs a new engine, and that's what's got, it's got an engine sitting on the floor over there. Got a brand new motor going in it, and I got to fix the transmission, and then we'll get that thing put back together. We should be happy, hopefully. At least be broke. <laughs> I don't know, that's probably the wrong thing to say, but you know what I mean. Um, 3.8, yeah, 3.8, and it's got a, I think it has 250,000 miles on it. Blue head gasket, and then just kept driving it until it finally went full nuclear, so... But it's a Jeep thing, you guys wouldn't understand. And then the transmission, it just pops out of first gear. The, the shift tower goes bad on the detents go bad. and It's like shifting a bag of marshmallows when you drive these things anyways. So um, Dorman, of all places, actually has an updated shift tower with really stiff detents in it. So we're going to give that the old college try, see what happens. So anyhow, I don't have anything really in particular to talk about today so i thought i'd leave it up to the people um hey what's uh who's that guy oh blazer o2ls how's it going buddy um so i don't have anything in particular to talk about so just i'm here i'm here for you for the people and we'll see what uh where the chat leads us it's been pretty roasty toasty here in the prny that's short for the people's republic of new york and it's been pretty warm, but the past couple days have been fantastic. Only in the upper 70s, low 80s, low humidity, and just lovely. So, that's been good. But we've been crazy busy here at work, as usual. We're usually running, um, uh, you know, a couple weeks out. And it's been like that. been two or three weeks out now for a few months. So, it's been a little hectic. It's been a little stressful. Um, you know, I think it's a blessing to have work to do and kind of a curse all at the same time um, but anyhow it's been good but it's just it gets a little it gets a little stressful when things don't go great or when you're waiting on parts and you got you know just a small shop and you know you get a lift that's plugged up and it's yeah full schedule and just trying to keep the people happy like the real people not like you guys but uh, the real people here you guys are real people I think we've established that in other videos let's be honest but you know what I mean? The customers, trying to keep them happy and keep the cars going and all that stuff. So it's just three of us here. It's just myself, my boy Josh. You guys know Josh been here forever. And then we've got some summer help. Uh, we got my guy Phil. So Phil, that works here now, is just here for the summer because he's a teacher. He's a teacher at the local automotive school um, at the autumn, on the high school level. So it's the BOCES. It's a vocational school for uh, local kids. Um, my audio is extreme. Is my audio any good? I guess before we get too far, is my audio good? General consensus. I just want to make sure. Okay, you guys are saying yeah, a couple. Okay, better I can hear. Okay, anyways, 
Uh, my guy, Phil, uh, like I say, he's a teacher at a, uh, at a local vocational school. So he did something to do in the summertime and to kind of work on, you know, professional development and, and to get out there and see, you know, see what's up. Oh, thanks, Jim. <laughs> um, you know, so he, he comes down to do that and works. Of course, you know, we pay him and everything, obviously. But, uh, you know, he uses it to his advantage. So he has something to take back to the kids. Um, oh, this minute, I got to block somebody here. I see they're getting spammed here. Let's see. Uh, oh, wait, I don't know what that is. Never mind. I thought it was somebody advertising some kind of porn or something. <laughs> but... Uh, Anyhow, so Phil, I think Phil makes a good choice and does that. And he's a good guy. He's been, you know, he's worked in the shop for a lot of years and worked, he's worked in a dealership. He worked for a really good independent uh, that was here uh, local. So I knew the guy he worked for. And then he worked, um, you know, in the, he's worked in the school system. Hey, thanks, Jeff. You're a good man. I don't care what they say about you. You too, Joe. So, uh, so that's it. Yeah, so we got Philly, but he's only here for the summer. And uh, then it's going to get stupid again after that. Uh, my guy, Jay, that was working here, the most eligible bachelor, uh, he quit. I don't know why, but just didn't want to didn't work here anymore, I guess. Um, but it is kind of a kind of stressed out area to work, even though I don't really yell or get stressed out. But you know what I mean. So, I don't know. He moved on to bigger and better things, I suppose. Hey, thanks, Gordon. I love what you do, too, buddy. So that's it. That's what's up. That's what's new here. Busier in a one arm paper hanger. And we got temporary help for the summer. And uh, I would probably hire another guy after Phil's gone, but I don't know. Hey, a case of beer. Thanks, buddy. Got one right here. Having a little yingling after the work. Local favorite from the Pennsylvania. That's my go to. But um, so, yeah, anyhow. Uh, oh, how's my son's grass mowing going? Pretty good. Bought him a new rig this year. Got him the new, uh, the new Husky. And uh, because as my other children come up through the ranks and do, uh, do the lawn mowing, I needed something easy for him to drive. And the old Poulan Pro uh, that uh, he was using last year, well, she's knocking a little bit, if we're honest. The motor sounds like a bag of marbles. So um, to help him along in life, mom and pops went out and bought him. A new mower so he could continue to make some money to save up for a car and and uh, stuff like that and and that way there like when he's bigger and has a, a vehicle and a real job then his brother or sister can take over the lawn mowing business and kind of keep it going so so that's why we did that for him and he's been doing good except he got kind of screwed out of the uh past couple of three weeks because we haven't had any rain so he hasn't been doing any mowing and if you ain't doing any mowing you ain't getting paid so he's learned a little lesson on that um george uh, wants to know what happens to the overalls did i like them oh i did oh and thanks a uh, key okay aki you're the man uh what did it happen with the overalls so i did get some overalls i bought four different brands of overalls from the uh from the amazon the try before you buy type thing you know and I tried out the Dickies, not my jam. Didn't like them. The crotch hang real low. Looked like you pooped pants. And I ended up going with some uh, some Bears. What's the brand? I believe it was. Or Burns, Bernie. This brand here. Uh, bought that brand. They fit great. And they feel good. And I only bought one pair. So I'm kind of wearing them around to see, uh, see how they wear. Stuff like that. See how long they last. Um, uh, what did Joe say here? Trying to hit these super chats. I, I don't know how to turn off on my phone. But uh, anyhow, let's see. I've got the Colorado with the big 2.9. And I can't do the injector test on number two cylinder scan tool. It says invalid injector number. I would try a different scan tool if I was you, Joe. That sounds like a scan tool issue more than anything. It's particularly if you can uh, go through and do the other, uh, the other three injectors. I would say it sounds like a scan tool issue. I would try a different, uh, different scan tool if it was me. Uh, yes, this guy here says that he tries the Carhartt ones. I didn't, I didn't know if Carhartt made the denim. Um, so I, I wanted a denim. I didn't want like that Carhartt duck material or whatever they call it. The, you know, like their canvasy type material. So, but anyhow, that's, that's that. So I'm still in the, in the learning phases of the, of the bib overalls. So. Vinny, where's my guy Vinny? He's, I still see him, he's still scooting around. Um, 
He doesn't, uh, he stops by, he stops by once in a while, comes in here, smokes up some cigarettes and bangs into some stuff with his cart and then leaves. I think he does it on purpose, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, anyhow. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, what's up, uh, what's up with you guys? Oh, Lyndon, Lyndon Brady, he says, I would love to bring in my escape, uh, bring my escape to you to see if you can figure out why my cooling fans run on high speed. Nobody in Baltimore can figure it out. Boy, I wouldn't think it would be too hard, sir. Um, but don't drive, don't drive all this way to have me fix a cooling fan. Just find another shop that knows what's up. <laughs> and if you have some mechanical ability yourself too, you, and you just lack service data, you can go on and get service data for Ford. It's relatively inexpensive and you can get a three day subscription, you know, if you need uh, wire diagrams or service specs or anything like that. So that is, uh, I've done a video on that. I can tell you what the video is called. It was something, wire and diagrams, I don't know. I had kind of a clickbaity title on it. Let me tell you here. If you just go on to self main auto channel whoops whoops just some minute getting click happy over here and then we type in wire diagrams in the search box wiring diagram let me see what video that brings up i'll give you the title of it it's called automotive wiring diagrams and service info so if you go on that on the self main auto channel You'll find that video, and then that will give you an explanation as as far as you know where you can find, uh, you know, factory service info and stuff like that if you need it. So, now for what it's worth, uh, this guy says that Puddin's Fab Shop swears by Roundhouse bibs made in USA. Oh, interesting Roundhouse. I can't say I ran across that brand when I was doing the googling. So I don't know. It's a different different character you know wearing them bibs there um you feel a little redneckish so but uh, anyways oh hey thanks frank take mrs over to lunch and give her a break from feeding me but boy she's a she's a good cook and a great wife and i tell you that girl she can cook of course you guys see it because i'm always teasing you by putting the stuff on the insty and on the facebook um oh yeah and that question is to where my dogs are so that's, you know, you guys always ask that, and it's kind of interesting. You guys must think I just take and pump my dogs out every time we get a different animal. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, my dogs are great. Well, Weston, the German Shepherd, he's at home, and he's a big old sucker. So we leave him at home, and Sheba, Sheba comes in about two or three times a week if she decides she wants to come to work. So uh, she was here yesterday, but Luna's here, you know, all the time. She's a straight cat. But, uh, you know, so that, that's where my dogs are at. Have I thought about moving my family to a less restricted location? Absolutely. I think about it all the time. Particularly as things keep happening in New York. We're not going to get into the politics of it. But god dang, it ain't getting any better, folks. <laughs> um, uh, yes, we did re uh, receive those plates, Kyle. Thank you very much. I actually think they're on the wall in the office. Um, we're actually, I can show you guys here real quick like a little bunny. I don't know if I can show you much because I don't know how much stuff Mrs. O has hanging out, but we've got almost all 50 states up on the wall in the old office. So you guys see I've got, got plates everywhere. I can't, I don't want to kind of show you. I don't want you to lay out a desk, but um, still lacking a few. I think we're only lacking like seven or eight that we've got to get up on the wall. But uh, yeah, so far so good. And then... Um, uh, let's see, do I ever get any first-gen Dodge Cummins in this? This is New York, fella. We don't get first-gen much of anything. Um, so, yeah, no, I'd have to say no to that one. I don't get any first-gen Dodges in or Cummins because I don't work on diesels. So, so uh, the short answer is no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about, but, yeah, I don't, I don't see them suckers. Uh... Yeah, you did. Oh, you see in the UK plate. I got I got a plate in there from Sweden and from Finland and Tokyo and Ethiopia and Australia. So we've got a lot of foreign uh, nameplates and a lot of like uh, uh, territories and stuff like that too. So yeah. No, it says let's get to work. Is what it says. But um, anyways, yeah, the Ethiopia plate. That's kind of cool. That's a neat looking one. Um. Am I going to post uh, this Jeep fix? No, Phil's working on that. He's doing the motor and stuff in it and fixing the training. And wait, I think most of the parts are going to be here tomorrow from Chrysler. So, yeah, nope. But, uh, 
let's see here. Uh, let's see. Well, you do any videos regarding a Toyota CVT replacement or maintenance in the future? I, I don't know. It's really hard to say. I mean, it depends on what rolls through the shop, you know. So none of my videos are are pre-planned or, you know, no real thought. Basically, it's, you know, we probably do, I don't know how many cars we do a day, you know, maybe 15 or 20 cars a day, something like that. So however many that is, you know, 60 to 100 cars a week. And occasionally I grab the camera and, you know, if I have to, if time allows, you know, then we do a video on whatever it is. So sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes I do some, we have some cars and, you know, I want to do, uh, you know, I want to do, you know, a video on it. It just, it just doesn't work. So can I explain cold start piston slap any long-term issues? Uh, gosh, Blaine, I, I, I really can't other than, I, I other than that's what it is you know if you have a cold start piston slap and if it's a known issue i suppose it could start to cause some cylinder wear over time i know back in the day we used to fix some of the 3.1s uh gm engines that had a really bad you know piston slap and all they did is have an updated piston that had a coated skirt on it to keep it from wearing in the cylinder walls but as far as like the long-term effects from it and stuff i'm, I'm not the right guy to ask for that uh, i'll be honest with you so um, do I know how to get the snapshot or the screenshot on the Think Tool Pros? Uh, without looking at the tool, I, I don't really know right offhand how to uh, get the screenshot on it, to be honest with you. I know on the Altel, uh, you know, you push and hold the camera button, it'll take a screenshot. Um, and then it stores it uh, under the image file, you know, if you, for whatever reason you need. I don't know if that's what you're talking about or not. But on the Think Pros, I don't use the Think Pro tools enough to, to know right offhand, to be honest with you. Anyways, um, my bow collection, oh, I don't really have a big bow collection. We have a lot of bows because everyone in our family uh, shoots archery. Uh, Mrs. O, I think, has more bows than I do. So, you know, she's got a target set up and a hunting set up and everything else. And, but, uh, yeah, no, the kids, they all they all shoot archery. And so, yeah, we've got quite a, quite a pile. But... <laughs> Will you ever see the brake cleaner and the sound come back, man? I try to put. I, I hope I'm not missing the brake clean sound when I do. Uh, when I have it in the videos, I try to make sure I put it in there. So, but um, let's see here. Let's see here. This guy writes here, old Phil Lilly says uh, he's from Utah and he has an old one, Jimmy with some engine damage so it needs to be rebuilt what's the best option to save money because the bottom end rebuilt done in the frame i suppose you could you know spin some bearings in it you know in the vehicle i'd be more inclined to pull the engine out so you'd have to know what the damage is before you know what kind of money that you can save you know what i'm saying so that's kind of a tough one um the training revolution uh he writes thanks for posting so many great videos and detailing your thought press on troubleshooting thanks for your knowledge sharing have a beer coffee frosty beverage on me we'll appreciate that training revolution um that's what i need is some training revolution <laughs> that's what i've been thinking about lately um need help and stopping saying chevrolet every time i see one sorry rob but uh, i do the same thing driving down the road and see a chevrolet <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do but um have I ever worked on a rotary car? Yeah, it's way back in the day, some RX-7s. Um, what month should you put your winter air in? Probably depends on where you live. Probably around October. You're going to want to start switching over to winter air. Do we have any good food plots? We do. We planted corn last year, and we got corn this year. So it's a corny kind of year. And the corn's growing really nice, thankfully, now that we've got some rain. But it's all grown up and tasseled and got ears on it. So, you know, going to watch Good Mythical evening of course i love watching me some good myths going those are my guys man um yes mrs o likes her kia um but uh let's see i don't know a lot of answers to a lot of your folks questions because some of these things are some some diy stuff that i don't i don't know much about you know as far as brand, name brands and certain things like that um James wants to know if I recommend one vehicle brand over others. That's a that's a pretty tough question, James. 
I'm a Toyota guy myself, you know, so I, I love driving Toyotas because that's what Scotty Kilmer says to do, and that's, that's what I do. Uh, beyond that, though, I've noticed that throughout my years that Toyotas are inherently reliable, and I, I like Toyotas. It's the brand that I work on the least, so that's, that's my assessment on that. A lot of people will disagree with it. Um, not a huge fan of a lot of quote-unquote domestic vehicles because that's what I work on the most, you know, I just see them falling apart, but I'm a Toyota guy. Um, used to be a Chevy guy way back when I was a kid, but now I'm, I'm just a, just a Toyota guy. I like just be able to go out and get my truck started up and go to work, but, uh, that's it. Uh, I don't really have any other rhyme or reason behind that. So, uh, yeah, I still undercoat with fluid film for sure. Got a couple, I got one out there I got to do. We're starting to, starting to do that more and more. Uh, I have my customers that I do fluid film, I'm not taking on new clients for fluid film just because it's so, it's so overwhelming. It's a big job. It's a messy job. It's not super profitable, but, uh, you know, it helps, it helps preserve our customers' cars for sure. Do I have a concealed carry permit? I do. I've had one for quite some time. Yep. You have to have one if you want to own a handgun in, in New York state. So. What do I recommend for lower ball joint replacement on an FK Cruiser? The entire arm or the press in ball joint? That's, uh, thank you, Dennis, before I forget. And thank you, Alex. That, that's a tough call. So I'll, usually if I have on any vehicle, if it's a whole control arm or a ball joint option, I will typically look it over good. You know, are, you know what kind of shape are the bushings in on the, on the lower control arm? If the bushings are questionable, then I would do the whole arm. But if you know the bushings look good, the arm's not all rusty, then I would go with just a straight up ball joint. Thanks, Sam. So, you know, just, you know, that, that's my, that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, that's right, JC. That's kind of how it is here. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, a lot of the stuff happening in New York. And unfortunately, a lot of it relates to New York City. So us guys up in upstate, you know, we really pay the price for what happens down there. And it kind of really kind of sucks. But yeah, this guy, uh, Daniel, said he lost faith when GM came up with the 3.6. I hear you, man. And I tell you what, it's I just had a customer that went and um, traded in their Traverse or their, whatever it was, uh, their Acadia that had, you know, the 3.6 in it. And they didn't get Zippy Zap for a trade-in, like $6,000, you know, towards this $44,000 vehicle they were buying. And the, and the vehicle they traded in was actually pretty nice. It was clean, it wasn't rusty. Um, and, you know, the at the auction, you can't even give these cars. You got a GM with a 3.6, people at the auction, they won't even touch them, you know. So, if, what's that tell you about it? You know, if even the used car guy doesn't want those piles. Um, but, uh, hey, thanks, Thomas, that's right, you can do it, buddy. Thanks, David. Um, so yeah, that 3.6, that thing is just a natural disaster from GM, but we won't sit here and bash GM. <laughs> I mean, we can, but we won't. <laughs> so yeah, you know, this guy wrote that he's got a 3.6 with, um, you know, 230K on it, regular oil changes every 5,000. And that is the key because I have other customers, they have 3.6s in their GMs and they are, you know, religious. Every 5K, they're here, we're doing Dexos oil change on it, you know. No time and chain problems, no nothing. They hit 180, 200,000. But then you get the ding dong that's going off that stupid oil life monitor. You know, every eight or 10,000 miles, you know, light comes on, then they make an appointment, then they forget about it. You know, so this thing's getting service, you know, twice a year, you know, every every 10,000. Those, those things don't even make it to 50K, you know, and the time and chains are like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I do not need an Indiana license plate. Thank you, though. Anyways, that's uh, that's that's my thoughts on the three six. Uh, let's see. He says, "How do you equate the time it takes to film a job into the labor pricing?" Actually, believe it or not, there, Pod, it doesn't take me a whole lot longer to do filming if I'm recording a job that I'm doing, because I've developed a method, so to speak, for you know, recording what I'm doing. So what I'm doing when I'm recording is essentially the same thing I'd be doing if I wasn't recording. Uh, but I guess to swing back around and answer your question is, uh, you know, I have the job quoted, you know, prior to, you know, doing it. So let's say, 
you know, it's a break job, you know, I quote 1.3 hours. Now, if I'm recording and fiddling around myself and it takes an hour and a half, well, you know, that that's on me, so. What are my thoughts on the first gen Ridgeline? I loved it, man. I owned one of those babies for a while. Uh, pretty good. Um, I serviced mine and I beat the balls right off that thing and uh, pulled trailers with it way too big and hammered on it pretty good, um, but maintained it well and it held up great. I really enjoyed it. So, and then they came out with the second gen, the kind of the sissy looking ones, and uh, that's why I bought my Tundra. But, um, anyways, yeah, I guess that's it. I don't really have much much else to say for you folks. Um, let's see what, uh, do I have any blooper? I don't have any blooper videos. Um, let's see. Yeah, but yeah, in regards to the amount of time it takes to record, it's not a lot. You know, I have more time into like, you know, frigging around with the editing and stuff than I do anything else. Other than that, you know, I'm just doing doing what I would do just to kind of, thanks, John, uh, just to kind of show you guys, you know, what's up and what goes on like in a, what goes on in a shop, you know, in the real life, in the real world and podunk, boca. <laughs> Uh, yeah, David, I do not need an Indiana license plate. Thank you, though. Somebody else already had asked that. So, but uh, yeah, more brake job videos. Oh my gosh, man, we do we do so many breaks. They just get it gets kind of mundane. But uh, but anyhow, um, what else you guys got going on? Oh, do I ever have to use an attenuator with a pico? I do, David, and it really depends on what you're doing. Um, if you don't know if you need an attenuator, like if you're, if you're doing a, you know, ignition coil circuit or a, a fuel injector and you don't know what the flyback voltage is going to be on it, put an attenuator on it until you get your initial reading. Now, I think the 4425A Pico has a higher, um, accepted voltage than the 4425, but still, if I don't know, if I'm questioning it and I don't know my scope spec can it handle 250 volts, I put an attenuator on it. So, because it's not going to hurt anything, so. Um, uh, let's see, 08 Tahoe with reduced engine power, oh, APP correlation codes. Uh, they've got a ton of service bulletins on them. So, check your TSBs on those. It'll probably lead you down the, lead you down the right path uh, on that, or, you, you know, perhaps you have uh, failing you know, APP sensor, but if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've seen 08, but uh, yeah, they used to have a ton of bolt-ins on those. Nikes or Adidas. Uh, Skechers would be my thing. Uh, what's for dinner? I don't know what Mrs. O cooked. She didn't cook dinner before she left, so I'm having a lager and some dry roasted peanuts from Wegmans. Not a sponsor, but they should be. What are my opinions on dealership technicians and the flat rate system? Uh, I've never worked in a dealership, so it's hard for me to, to, to put an answer to that question. The flat rate system doesn't work super great. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Thanks for showing your love. Here's Chevy Thunder. <laughs> but the flat rate system doesn't work great uh, in, our, in our area, in our climate, and you know what we do here in the shop is an in Indy, just because of the amount of rust and corrosion. Um, let's see, Darian. Yes, we do have the Norwegian license plate. Thank you. It is here. Um, but yeah, the rust and corrosion uh, here in the PRNY is pretty tough. So, you know, looking up flat rate, uh, you know, I'll use it as a guidance. But, you know, fortunately, I've been doing it long enough. Typically, when we have a job in, we'll look at it and see what it is. Okay, well, the book time says it's, you know, three hours or whatever it is. If it's something we haven't done, kind of glance through service data to say, you know, do we got to remove part, you know, A, B, and C? And if we do, what do they look like? And, you know, I'll say, well, it's three hours, but we're going to have to figure out with this. So be, even on my estimate, I'll just add an extra hour. I'll just say like, well, here's four hours. That'll kind of CYA cover your hiney. And that's what we do. And I usually will make the customer aware and say, well, here's, you know, about what time it's going to take. If I get into the mess and it's going to run way over, I'm going to give you a call, let you know what's up. Most of them just say, you know, forget about it. Just, just fix it. Usually what they tell me. But um, would you rather work with in a shop all day, Rain Man weight or 
Watch West work. Would you rather work with? Oh, who would I? Ra oh, who would I rather work with in the shop? Rain Man Ray or Watch West work? Well, that's a tough call, man. You can't put me in that position. I'm, I'm friends with both of them. Uh, I talk to Wes a lot more. We we text back and forth quite a bit. Um, he's pretty familiar with with what I go through uh, as far as rust and and crap like that. So we would probably, I I would probably get along with both of them just fine. Um, anyways. Yeah, that's a tough call. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna answer. I would rather work with both of them. Oh, thanks, Jose. If you got uh, one dollar tomorrow, what would you do with your time? If if you got one one dollar tomorrow, what would I? I guess I don't understand that question. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's that. That's what's up here in New York. Now we're out of beer. Uh, how do I motivate myself to do reoccurring fixes every day? Well, they're reoccurring, but they're um, oh what oh what oh a million dollars this minute. I'll answer your question. What was his question? If I had a million dollars tomorrow, what would I do with my time? What would I do if I had a million dollars tomorrow? I would take that money and invest it, all of it. And then I would just go to work and then I would let it ride. That's what I would do. If I had a million dollars tomorrow, I'd invest every bit of it and then let it ride. And then and then go to work. That's what I would do. And then I forget what the heck I was just talking about prior to that. How do I work on the mundane tasks each day? That was it. Um, oh, Stan. See, that's, that's the problem with these super chat things. I don't know where they go on my phone. I'm sorry if I've missed somebody. I'm really sorry if I missed somebody's. Um, gosh dang it. Let me kind of scroll back through here. I don't see. A little shop in the shed. What would you. Uh, oh, no, that's much less work. Oh, Stanley, here we go. Uh, hey, he's from Cannes Steel. Oh, with Cannes Steel. That's a, that's a local guy there. Uh, which is there an AC issue on a 14 Sonata AC at factory charge works fine below 80 if it if over and to give it gas it kicks off and doesn't come back on so replace place uh, best guess my best guess Stanley would be to throw a set of gauges on it and see why it's kicking off either throw a set of gauges on it or throw a scan tool on it and see what's going on is it is it kicking off because you know high pressures uh, you know it's going over pressure um, that would be my guess as far as what's going on. I don't do a ton of AC here in the shop, oddly enough. We do some, but not enough to where I see pattern failures other than leaks. You know, if you, if you told me you had a leak, I could probably tell you where it was. Uh, you know, about 14 Sonata, fine below 80. If it's over and it gives it gas, I'm assuming it's, um, I'm assuming it's kicking off because of overpressure would be my guess. But I would definitely get a set of gauges on it and see what's happening. You know, that would be what I would do. Probably you're going to be better served uh, to take it to a shop and have them check it out would be would be my assumption. So, um, oh my gosh, I'm just going to ask you folks to kind of hang off on the uh, uh, super chats. It's, it gets kind of confusing here on my phone. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the best all season tire? My favorite tire, Roger, is the General RT43. If I have to sell an, a general, a, a, just a basic middle of the road all season tire to a customer, that's probably my number one seller and has been the least troublesome, best tire that I've sold uh, for several years running. So yeah, the RT43 or the RT45 General tire has been very good. I get very, very, very few complaints, you know, anybody complaining about them and uh, usually get good good tire wear they don't tend to feather they're not noisy you don't get broken belts they just they're good um, uh, mark wants to know at what point i figured out my troubleshooting method was there a time where you use the parts cannon uh it really seems to be a lost start so yeah i mean there's um let's get on here okay give me just one second there dude um Jake, yes, you can add a USB port to a car pretty easily. You have to see what kind of car you're driving. Usually there is open accessory 
ports in it or places that you can add on, particularly something like a USB port because it's such a low amperage circuit, low voltage, low amperage. So yeah, you can, you can do it um, quite easily actually. So, but as far as, to get back to the next question, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to stay on track here. Um, as far as when I figured out my, my troubleshooting method, I, I guess it's kind of how I've, how I've always just done things. It's how I grew up, um, just kind of an analytical thought process, you know, never really was much for uh, trouble trees because it, once you start using them, they seem kind of, kind of senseless. Or I would, you know, as a young mechanic, you know, back in the late 90s, you know, I would look, you know, we had Mitchell back when it was on CDs, you know, you'd look on there and he had like, you know, step one, do this, step two, do this. And, you know, and, and I was young and I wasn't very smart and you would go through and you'd start doing these tests and, you know, you'd get these readings and it would say, you know, go to this wire and go to this wire. And I'd have this reading, I'd have this, you know, arbitrary number and like, you know, what is it? And then I just started asking questions like, well, this is stupid. I'm just, I'm just gathering data and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And why do they want me to do this test? Like, what's the point of it? And that's when I started having, you know, I was like, well, you know, screw this. We just need to know how this component works and we're gonna make up our own test. Because you start reading engineering flowcharts and you find out that engineers are ding-dongs and it doesn't even make sense in the real world. You know, perhaps on paper it does, but practical application, it's nonsense. So I guess that's how I came about my process is you just, you know, fake it till you make it, I guess. I, I don't know how else to say it. You just, it's just how I approach most everything in life, I suppose. But uh, anyways, um, there's an old tech from the 90s. Thanks for what I do. It's generation lucky you have guys like you. Here's your ice cream funds. Well, thanks, buddy. Um, old tech from the 90s. Wow. That was like right around the era of the throttle body and the good old days, right? <laughs> Well, I do, do appreciate that, so um, just to confuse me more, thanks. That's what I needed, some more confusion. Okay, we're out of, we're out of confusion. Okay, whoo! Uh, I don't mean that you guys are ding-dongs if you're engineers. I'm just saying, like, engineering flowcharts, if you guys had to read them, it's a ding-dong that writes them. Because let's be honest, if an electrical engineer wrote this, he's an idiot because you don't do you know, resistance checks from one end of the harness to the next. That is the most stupidest thing you could do. And that's not even a word. That's, I mean, their flow charts are as bad as my grammar. You know, it's just, it's just nonsense things like that. Like, what are we, what are we literally going to prove by doing, you know, a resistance check from this wire to this wire? Nothing. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. You know? <laughs> Same thing a war is good for. Absolutely nothing. Anyhow, uh, Michael says he's got an O2 S10 ZR2. Wow, Chevrolet 84K. Wife won't let me sell it. Worst vehicle I've ever owned. It, it does always start and drive, but it's a rattly POS. Well, welcome <laughs> to the world of the Chevrolet S10, fella. They are the most rattly, clunky, plastic, squeakity rust buckets in the New York state. I don't know where you live, but I know here they're quite rattly and the four three is pretty reliable, but gosh, I was so glad to see that, that style S 10, uh, just all hit the crusher when those things were gone. They were just, they just had a lot of bad memories <laughs> working on those things. Just, they were just awful. But, um, that's my thoughts on it. Do I have any recommended recommendations for finding happiness? <laughs> Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of happiness you're looking for. Um, I don't, I don't really have an answer for, for finding happiness. Um, maybe you could find a, a good local church. I don't know if your question is serious or not, but, um, anyways, I'm not, probably not the guy to answer that question. You know, I'm not a guy to answer a lot of questions. Um, Matthew's bow is like your hat. Well, I shoot elite, but I wear Matthew's, so. <laughs> Go figure that out. Uh, yeah, I shoot the, uh, Ma I have a, yeah, Matthews. I had a Matthews Atlas, and I sold that, and then I got the new Elite Envision. So, that's what I'm shooting right now. Well, let's see. How do I new like the new DeWalt 12-volt cordless? 
Uh, I'm up in the air about it. I'll be, let me go grab it because I'm going to show you something. Holy smokes, Mike. You're kind of crazy, buddy. Um, thanks for making your life more bearable. Man, if I'm, if I'm bringing you happiness, uh, I'm glad that we do, Mike, and I appreciate your super chat there. Um, that's mighty, uh, mighty nice of you, and I'm glad that we can make your life more bearable. I'm not sure how, but apparently we do. So this is the new DeWalt 12-volt uh, brushless 3 8 I'm kind of up in the air. They advertised it at like, you know, 50 foot pounds or whatever. And I know, I think they did it over on the torque test channel. All right. And uh, I think it did achieve that, but it's, it's kind of finicky to use in comparison to, you know, the old Mac one with the three eighths that also takes the DeWalt battery. I guess short answer to the question, if I had to buy either one of these two again, I would buy this one all day long. Okay. It's just, it's it's smoother. This thing eats batteries like they're going out of style. So I, I've i got to watch the video over on the Torque Test channel again. I think this came out on top. Um, but, I mean, it's okay. It, it's rigid. It's heavy. You know, you can crack stuff loose with it. It's kind of weird because sometimes you squeeze the trigger and it just doesn't go. And you got to kind of kind of like pump the trigger so to speak and it goes but I tell you what when the battery's done I mean it just, it just quits so I'm not I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with it you kind of got to run it wide open all the time I can say I like this is my Mac tools one I, I like this one I like this one better just overall this feels good in the hand it feels heavy it's heavier than this one it's sturdy uh, I thought maybe my batteries were getting kind of crappy about new batteries or a couple new batteries and it's just I mean it's okay I like this one better but I'm, I'm still in my heart like if you guys can see in my heart there's still some air tool guy in there I'm I still grab a lot of air tools I like these for going to the junkyard and I like them for doing some stuff in interior work some things like that uh, but overall I mean it, it's okay I think I think it has some improvements, but what do I know? <laughs> Not much, I'll tell you that right now, fella. Uh, have I had a chance to use Stable in 22? Sure have, a uh, little shop in the shed. Uh, I have the stuff that you sent me, plus I've got some more of my own, and there's some concentrate. Hey, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that there, fella. So, um, but anyways, oh, what's, what's my favorite dish from Mrs. O? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, she makes a pretty mean Dutch apple pie. I like that. That's one of my favorites. And then the salad. This, there's this one salad that she makes that's pretty stinking awesome. It's a spinach strawberry feta with poppy seed dressing, almond slices in it. That's one of my favorite uh, green stuff uh, salad. And then I tell you lately, I'll tell you guys what I bought. I'll tell you what I bought this minute. Let me answer James' question here. James said he knows... Uh, I know how to fix so many cars. I don't even know because of you. Uh, I don't know why I'm thankful for that, but I sure am. Well, thanks, James. I'm glad that we've helped you fix cars that you don't have and may never own. <laughs> but anyhow, I was going to tell you guys, one of the best things that I've bought is a pit barrel cooker. And I tell you what, it seems like a pretty simple device. Let's be honest. It's just like a 30-gallon drum with some re-rod through it. But they put a fancy coating on it, you know, so you can wipe off the outside, I suppose. But I bought me a pit barrel cooker. And I tell you what, that stuff that comes out of the pit barrel is amazing. Now, me and Mrs. O, we like our barbecue. Even though we're from New York, we're barbecue junkies. We eat a lot of red meat. We eat a lot of chicken. And uh, I've done two now, uh, two prime ribs in it. So... And just half ribs, so three bone prime ribs, you know, six pounders. And I tell you what, you get the meat sweats because you cannot stop eating that stuff. And they are just so good. You cook it up to about 110 degrees, pull it, let it sit. Gets up to about, you know, 115, 120, so that the baby's still rare in the middle. It's more tender than a mother's love. Let me tell you what, it is some good stuff. 
I mean, we've done, you know, full packer briskets, tons and tons of ribs, you know, baby backs, short rack, or, um, yeah, it's a short rack of ribs. We've done, you know, St. Louis style, just everything, man. We've done, you know, tons of pork butts in it. And, oh my gosh, that stuff's going to kill. I've literally put on like 18 pounds already. It's rough. Um, while I'm working in Mako in Bellingham, Washington, sometimes I listen to you while I work because in the mechanic world, you ain't no dummy. I don't know about that, Corey. That's a matter of opinion. Uh, I fall short on a lot of things, buddy. Um, yeah, I tell you guys what, you know, look, look, if you're thinking about, if you're thinking about, you just want to get your little feet wet, you want to stick your little hand in the, in the little wetness and, um, get into a barbecuing and you're thinking like, do I want to go offset smoker, cheap offset smoker? Do I want to go, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to trigger and pellets and electric and all that stuff? I'm kind of old school guy. I'm, I'm all about gravity and wood and just charcoal, just plain old fashioned, old fashioned. Looked into this quite a bit, ended up settling on a pit barrel and by golly, I'm glad I did. They are a set it and forget it type thing. Boy, you throw your pork butt in there, walk away, go drink some beers, come back, boom, it's done and it's amazing. So, not a sponsor, but I wish they were. <laughs> so anyhow, um, the 498K air hammer is is a one-off, Mike. You can't buy that thing. I've got, there's only two in the whole world. I've got one and another guy's got another one. The 498, the 4980 you can get, but the 498K you can't, buddy. Um, uh, Bill from Maine says, uh, him and his engineer friends love my channel. Uh, we wish, uh, or you have skills I wish all engineers had. Wow, that's pretty sad, Bill, because engineers should be way smarter than I am. I'll give you that much, but thanks for watching. I'm glad your friends watch. And, uh, but yeah, no engineers should be putting me to shame, I'll tell you what. Um, Jose said he's got an 014 liter Wrangler, third start after not being driven, hard start. Flood mode helps, runs rough then, no codes, fuel pressure's good, injector pulse good, after third start, never does it again. Third start after the third start, after not being driven. <sighs> Boy, I don't know, Jose, you could have, you could have a lot of issues. Um, you know, if it sits, it sounds like it sits. Is, is what I'm picking up here. Third start after not being driven, hard start. But it runs rough. I don't know if it means like you drive it and then the third time you go to start it. Thanks, Steven. Um, I mean, that vintage four liter had a ton of problems uh, eating antifreeze. I do know that for a fact. Uh, but other than that, you say flood modes helps. I would be curious to know, um, you know, if, if, you know, perhaps you do have a, you know, leaky, you know, leaky fuel injector. That's filling up a cylinder. Um, quite a few, quite a few variables you could go there. Sometimes it's really tough. That's why I hate. I don't want to say I hate it, but sometimes it's tough when people send in, you know, super chat or ask a question because there's just with one question you ask me, I've got five more I want to ask you. <laughs> so, so anyways, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Probably doesn't. <laughs> Kevin Windsor says he owns a pit barrel cooker, char, grill, gravity feed, a Weber Summit. This guy's hardcore. Kettle, Weber Smoky Mountain, Weber Smoky Joe. Wow. And Blackstone 22 inch. This guy's hardcore. <laughs> a lot from a dummy. That's, that's right. You can learn a lot from a dummy. I've learned a lot from other dummies. <laughs> but yes. Uh, yeah, stick a bore scope in the cylinders. And that, that's a good idea too, Jimbo. I just had a guy in here with his Prius. Same thing. You know, sits overnight, started up, got this cold start stumble. I mean, that's a pretty common thing on a Prius. And they tend to fill, you know, the cylinders with coolant and could easily see that. Put a pressure tester on the radiator, put it at 15 pounds, let it sit for a couple hours, pulled the plugs, and boom, you know, went down in there with a bore scope. And, you know, it was, it was plain as day. You could see that sucker. So there you go, you know. And his was the same thing, you know, extended crank, hard start, you know, start, uh, you know, start shimmying and shaking and stuff. So, but, uh. So this guy said he's got a 12 Accord, had wheel vibrations at higher speed, did pass doors all the way around, still issue. If it's an issue when you're braking, you know, then obviously it's some, you know, you have some form of runout. I would stick a dial indicator on it and see if you have some runout in a hub. 
otherwise, if you just have vibration at higher speeds without the brakes being applied, I'd be looking more into, you know, wheel balance. So, you know, that's where, that's where I would put my efforts and I would probably try to find a shop, you know, if you've had them balance over and over again, I would find a shop with a road force machine and see if they can balance it that way and give you some insight of whether or not you have a tire that's, you know, discreet and shake. Uh, this guy's got an 05 Lincoln with a big V8, won't idle once it's warmed up. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, you Again, Corey, you know, a ton of questions for you. I would have, you know, scan tool plugged into it. I would see what my IAC command is, and I would see if my auto air control valve is actually working. And then I'd be looking, you know, at my field trims and stuff and gathering some base engine data as far as how it's running. Particularly if, you know, if you can keep your foot on the throttle and keep it running, I certainly would be looking at the idle circuit. Idle air control valve, has somebody messed with, you know, the low idle screw or anything like that, I'm assuming it's still, you know, cable drive. Um, Eric is going to order some merch, trying to figure out what size order, what size SMA shirts do I wear? I wear a large, and I'm starting to fill that up quite a bit, uh, thanks to the pit barrel. <laughs> um, Steven writes, hey buddy, love your videos, love all the fake it till you make it expressions, got a shop. And I was wondering if you had any tips on getting more customers in and my name out. Uh, boy, Stephen, you know, I grew up in a small town when we started, you know, pretty much, you know, just kind of know everybody. So I've never really done a lot of marketing, uh, you know, even long before YouTube, before we were big and famous and all that stuff, uh, you know, which doesn't really reflect on my daily stuff here. But um, prior to that, you know, I guess just a good rapport with people, you know, good news travels fast, bad news travels faster. I would perhaps look into, you know, like I say, I don't know anything about marketing, but if you're new and you're trying to get, you know, out there beyond word of mouth, uh, perhaps I would be looking at some social media advertising. I think they can do uh, generalized area, you know, on Facebook and Instagram and stuff because people were, you know, like all day were like this. You know, we're going to get humped over next because they're doing this all day. So perhaps you can get some word of mouth out there or at least get some exposure to the people in your area. Uh, I know there's, you know, mail out flyers and, and stuff like that. If you create your own, you can go to your uh, local post office, I know. And for a certain fee, they will deliver to a certain range. Uh, you can check into that. So, you know, if you you know, made up your own flyers or, you know, advertisements or whatever, just to get your name out. I wouldn't go selling yourself short and, you know, doing, you know, $5 oil changes and stuff like that. You got to keep yourself employed. You don't have to keep yourself busy. That's, that's a big thing. That's a huge mistake I see shops make. They want to keep their guys busy and not employed. So, you know, keep that in mind. You want to get your name out and let people know you're there. You know, you might look into an avenue like that. But again, I'm not, I'm not a great marketing fella, to be honest with you. All of our stuff we just did by word of mouth. Um, <laughs> Jacob Price, he's got a 72 Plymouth Valent with a 225 slant 6, 62 millimeter turbo. Should I set the timing and fuel mixture based on upper end of throttle and getting on it lower end for... Dude, I would have no idea. That's so far out of my wheelhouse. I don't know what a Plymouth Valent is or a 62 millimeter turbo. Like I say, I, I, I wish I could answer some of your guys' questions, but you guys got to understand, I'm just a regular old schmuck that works on, you know, junky cars. So uh, as far as doing custom tuning and stuff like that, that's, that's far beyond me, dude. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. He said he bought a Robin Air LD9. I've never seen my video with the LD7. First time I opened up, got an air master check or replace sensor, sent it back, and I'm concerned the LD7 was not happy. Oh, that's interesting because uh, I've only ever had to put the, the heated tip sensor on mine, I think, twice in, in several years that I've owned it. And that's the message it gives me. And believe it or not, when the last, because I'd put one on it this year, when I got a brand new sensor tip from Robin Air, they're like 50 bucks. The first one I got was bad. Uh, brand new one right out of the box. I wonder if they're going through a, a, a spell of them or something because they end up just sending me another one and it works fine. Just the tip itself, though. So uh, thanks, Rick. So, yeah. Uh, do I bow hunt or gun hunt? Yes, <laughs> both, baby. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jay, we already talked about Jay. He quit. He just he just quit one day. So I try not to be a prick. I don't think I'm a prick. Um, 
But yeah, yeah, on your Robin Air uh, thing there, I'd give them a call, see if they just send you a new one. But like I say, you sent it back. But yeah, it probably just had a faulty tip. Uh, that's weird because the same thing happened to me. So, but uh, yeah, no, no notice. Just, just that. Just over, man. <laughs> Show's over, fella. I don't know why this thing isn't uh, scrolling here. Oh, there we go. But anyhow, I don't know what else to. Uh, well, to talk about here, folks, we've been about an hour pretty much talking about nothing. Um, we'll just see. Uh, oh, people are asking about the young ladies that worked here, Miss Hannah and Miss Marie. Now, they've uh, moved on uh, and, and grown up to be adults and homeowners and doing their thing. So, yep, they no longer work at the SMA, but that was just a temporary stop in their path of, of life. So, that's, uh, and they're doing good. Um, yeah, everybody's everybody's great. My boy Josh, he's over there. He's working out good, so he's still he's probably a lifer. So, uh, no, Jay's still in the PRNY, I guess. Uh, what do I think about Jasper remands? Well, I got one over there sitting on the floor. That's a Jasper right there, big three point eight. And I'll tell you, I know a lot of people. Um, oh, thanks, D Money Garage, for the tips. I don't know what tips and tricks I gave you, but. Uh, anyhow, uh, I haven't personally had a, had a real issue with Jasper. We do a lot of their trainings and engines. I don't say a lot, but if I do a reman unit, that's who I do. And I'll be honest, I haven't had any warranties or any issues, but we're pretty particular, you know, when it comes to, you know, putting them in and make sure we're doing a good job and stuff. So perhaps that's some of it, but I know a lot of people online, you know, kind of gripe about them. But in my personal experience, I've had good experience with them. So we just, we just keep using them. Um, this guy's got a 99 Tahoe with the big 5.7 American filled engine. I don't know what that means. Uh, misfire cylinder 400 load, uphill and towing, throttle body said hone valve guide. Oh, the TB 2000 is ignition good. Uh, not sure. So I've had a lot of experience with those 5.7s back in the day that would develop a misfire uh, uphill under load and towing and it was a valve hanging in a guide i've actually done a video on them it was on a chevy 4.3 uh, which also had the same problem you know obviously they use the same valves and, and guides and stuff so same issue and the valve will hang in the head it creates an intermittent misfire though so if you're just you know you got the pedal to the plastic and you're going up the hill and then it develops a misfire and you pull over and it's like boom 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 and then all of a sudden it fixes itself about a 90% chance that's what you have going on. So, uh, like I say, I did a video on that on a, a Chevy S10 or S10 Blazer, same thing. Uh, but those those older Tahoes with the 5.7, same, same issue. Yeah, the other valve guides hang up in the head. So, but um, uh, Doug wants to know if I have any suggestions on a minor scan tool that will read data from, a, from the OBS F250 Power Stroke OBD2 OBD1 hybrid connector without buying any specific adapter. Boy, I don't know, Douglas. I do have a guy that has a 97 F250, I think, that has both the connectors, or 96 rather, I think it was, with the power stroke. And I know I've read codes out of that and transmission stuff just with the Altel. But, you know, again, that's something I don't have a ton of experience with because I don't usually see vehicles that old. Uh, most, you know, 96 F250, uh, where they started making that transition. I think it's over like over on a passenger side or something, wasn't it? And um, or over in the middle of the dash or, you know, middle below the ashtray or something there. I haven't had an issue reading them with, with the Alltel, but, you know, I only have one customer that has one of those. Um, uh, anyways, let's see. Uh, Tim says he's over on the pigeon. He thought I'd retired. No, I haven't retired yet. Um, <laughs> keeping the one wheel brake jobs coming. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, so thanks, Tim. And just for the record, we do... Uh, we do do both wheels eventually, so only one on the video, though. Just take whatever we do here and do it on the other side. Um, do I ever plan on coming to Southern California? Absolutely not. It's the only state worse than New York. <laughs> or, or equally as bad. I, I don't mean that in any way to offend anybody, but... Uh, yeah, no, I don't have any any plans in the future of going to California. So, um, but anyways... Gosh, I just want to get back to the chat here. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Kyle. Um, your 2010 Sedona has rich codes on bank one and two. Would I recommend without replacing fuel injectors? Can I just clean them out? I wouldn't go just winging fuel injectors at, a, at all. 
I would figure out what's the cause of the rich code. And the easiest way to do that is give yourself, give yourself a list. Like I'll, I'll make a list. Like, you know, I want to, what can make the car run rich? You know, yeah, you can have fuel injectors, but what are the odds of fuel injectors going bad on both banks? Well, it's about 0%. You know, what can cause it? Fuel pressure is too high. Faulty fuel injectors. Skewed mass airflow sensor. Skewed map sensor. You know, too much fuel pressure. Uh, stuck open canister purge valve. So there's lots of things. I would make a list and then I would go down and look at that stuff. You can have, you know, a faulty air fuel ratio sensor on both banks. Probably not. Um, you know, so there's things like that that can cause rich codes. I would make myself a list what can cause rich codes and I would just go down through and start checking them off. And most of that stuff you can just nab down like super quick. So, you know, re restricted airflow, you know, just, just start, just start brainstorming, you know, with somebody and, and make that list and go down. Don't go winging injectors at it. It's particularly if you're going to get them on eBay because you're just going to create more problems. So figure out what the problem is, then fix it. Don't just change some parts. Yep. Uh, let's see. If I had to replace a Tundra with another truck, what would it be? It would be with a 2021 Tundra. That's what I would buy. Mid-90s Ford here and looking. I wouldn't get the new Tundra, the 22s or the 23s with that new 3.5 twin turbo in it. I really should have bought a 21 Tundra just because I drive a 13 and even Mrs. O said, you should just go buy a new 21. So you always, you know, you have it. But they still got some crap on it, you know. They've got the, you know, driver assist systems and the lane keep assist and all the all the garbage you don't need on a pickup truck, which ends up being a huge pain in the ass with a snow plow and when you're towing. I don't know. I hate cars, but it's what I do. So, but if I had to go buy a new one and didn't really care about some of the garbage on it, I would probably be looking at a 21 Tundra if I was looking for something as new as I could get. But uh, that's it. And who knows, maybe that 3.5 twin turbo or the 3.5 and the hybrid are good. They have a tremendous amount of power. I do know that. But it's just not, it's not for me. I, I tend to keep, uh, keep my trucks too long. <laughs> yep. But anyways, uh, uh, when you go on vacation, we already went on vacation. Uh, we already gone and come back. So this guy's got a 14 silver router with a mobilizer. So it pops every couple of months. I have to disconnect the battery and reconnect it to get it to work. Dude, I wouldn't have any idea on that, Eric. Um, great name, by the way. You must be a handsome man. Uh, your best bet is, is to, if it was me and you really wanted it fixed, is when it's broke. I know it's going to sound super inconvenient, but when it's broke and you have a mobilizer issues, you know, I would try my second key. If my second key didn't work, I would leave it broke and probably get it towed to my, um, get it towed to my shop. Uh, because on a 14, that should still use a key, so you're not worried about like you know batteries in your key fob or anything like that, because you're still you're still using a key. That's that's what I would do. Leave it broke and you know take it in. So am I hiring? No, I'm not hiring. So, <laughs> moved to Tennessee. We get all the libs from New York and California. Why did they all, sense of people, stay there? Uh, well, I'm hoping to move someday, but we got to wait till we get retired. Tennessee is on our is on our radar. <laughs> so that is one state we've been looking at. I would love to stay in the Appalachian Mountain region, to be honest with you. I don't want to move any place super hot, but I need to get the hell out of this state as soon as we can. As soon as my kids are all grown up and, and established, it's adios. P-R-N-Y, I'll tell you that much. But I don't want to move someplace hot. Hot and humid. Tennessee's probably pretty hot and humid, but I tell you, I love Pennsylvania. But it's, you know, politically it's just as bad as New York. <laughs> so I don't know. The whole world's effed up anyways. So who knows? Probably just end up staying here. Uh, Eric, what... Uh, vehicle, this is from JJ, I call him. Uh, what vehicle that you worked on this year that made you throw your hands up and nope, I'm out. Make you rethink my career. Uh, what have I thrown? I haven't thrown my hands up on anything this year. I did have a fella come in with an older Chevy Tracker and it was just a nightmare. You know, no parts available. Everything's discontinued for it. It had some EVAP stuff. He really tried to source out some used parts and got a used gas tank and used EVAP stuff, but it was just a chivacle and just didn't it didn't work out 
shook his hand, sent him on his way. Just like, you know, it's just going to be a shish show trying to jerry rig this whole thing to make it work and make it seal up. So it just didn't work. I felt pretty bad, but you just, it is what it is, man. I mean, this is New York, dude. Things are rotted. Lord, now I'm getting all kinds of suggestions where to move. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. When me and Mrs. O are, are able, and, you know, Lord willing, we would like to go and visit all different places throughout the United States. And it is on my bucket list of things to do before I'm an old duff. And if, if everything works out, when, you know, hopefully my kids grow up and don't be jerks and get jobs and get established and start their own families and stuff, uh, Mrs. O and I, we would like to, we would like to travel and we would like to see the United States before, before, before we're old and before it's inconvenient and, you know, before you have all kinds of physical ailments or limitations. So what our intention is or what we dream about and what we talk about when we're laying in bed and staring at the ceiling is what, what would we do if we were retired? You know, if we were to, you know, sell our business and, you know, if we were financially able to retire, which hopefully we will, you know, someday, you know, what would we do? And we think about that. And we talk about it because it's fun to dream about that stuff. And, and hopefully someday it becomes reality. And I think what we would do instead of, you know, having a camper and traveling and seeing everything, we really like to rent Airbnbs. Like if we go somewhere, we usually get an Airbnb instead of a motel. And it's kind of neat because a lot of times you're like, you know, you're in the community in which you, you know, you're at the Airbnb. So it's like you got your own little house, you know. So we would likely pick places that we would like to see. Let's say, for example, we wanted to go to Utah or we wanted to go to Texas. And we were retired and we had no obligations and, you know, our, our kids are doing their things and stuff like that. We would go to Utah and perhaps we would get a couple different Airbnbs throughout the state and stay, you know, at this place for a week and then go to another place for a week and just check out different areas. And then, you know, travel to, you know, another state and see, see some things like that. So that's what we talk about that we would like to do. And I think that would be pretty fun because you would really get to get to see a place. And then if we found a place where like, wow, we really liked, you know, we really like going to Maine or we really like New Hampshire or whatever, you know, whatever state it is. Then perhaps maybe some New York winter, we would say, you know, adios, New York winter. We're going to go to this place and rent an Airbnb for a whole month. You know, and just stay there and just, you know, check out the, check out the community, check out the scene. And then you get to see, you get to see how things really are, you know, before you make a decision, you know, do I want to move here? Because it takes a lot to, you know, to pull up roots and move, you know, I, it really sucks how sucky New York state is. And I don't know how to say that any nicer way other than saying that's, that's what it is. It sucks how frigged up our state is and how frigged up people are. And the things that are going on and you know without even getting into it y'all know what i'm talking about because when you get out of new york city and you come up here to upstate new york it is a absolutely beautiful area we live in you know we have family here we have a home here we have lots of property here and we absolutely love it here it's a, it's a great place you know we have we have all four seasons you know and we don't have every animal is not going to try to kill you we don't have a lot of dangerous snakes and tornadoes and earthquakes and tsunamis you know it's really a, a kind of a great place to live it's cold in the winter it's hot in the summer we got spring and fall and you know great deer hunting and just a lot of nice stuff beautiful area but it's just it's just a freaking disaster so so anyways i don't really want to move because i love the area but i wish i wish the rest of new york downstate would just like get kind of cut off and they have their own little state and we could be on our own little upstate new york people but yeah i mean we got a lot of black bears but black bears they don't want nothing to do with you man they don't black bears won't hurt you unless you hurt them <laughs> famous last words <laughs> so anyways yeah run for governor i wish there's no chance of a of a republican governor ever being in new york state i'll tell you that but I'd run for governor, but nobody would vote for me because I'm pretty, I'm pretty normal. I guess we'll leave it at that. Pretty just plain old. I'm just a plain old guy. Yeah. So, but anyways, the whole world's frigged up. So by the time we get to retire, every place is going to be like New York. So we'll just get to, we'll just be here. So, <laughs> 
Yeah, when I moved to Alaska, yeah, they got no snakes, do they? I don't, I'm not a big snake guy. Uh, we are, I do want to see Alaska. Before I die, I'm going to Alaska. I tell you what, man. There's a lot of states I want to visit. There's a lot of beautiful areas. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have much interest in going to um, any, any type of city. So, yeah, so I'm not, not really going to visit any city. I don't mind going to a city, like check it out for a day, but I'm kind of a, kind of a remote guy. You know, uh, the less people, the better. I know that probably sounds terrible uh, to you folks, but <laughs> if I'm just being truthful, that's being truthful. And that's a really hard thing for me, and that's the one thing that I struggle with as a person. And um, is I'm, I'm an okay people person, but I'm not a great people person. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to love your neighbor and, and all that stuff. That's That's kind of a big struggle for me, so... But anyways, but that's my thing. So, how old am I? I'm 43 years old. Uh, I've asked Ray if you want to do a live chat together, but I think he's a, he's kind of a busy guy. How did I come up with my my uh, my my name for my shop? We're on South Main Street, and I'm an auto repair shop. Put two and two together, South Main Auto. <laughs> SMA. Uh, so yeah, there wasn't a lot of thought into my shop name. So, but anyways, yeah, I like areas outside of the city. Yeah, no, I haven't been doing much mountain bike lately. Um, yeah, if if you can see your neighbor from your porch, yeah, that's too close for me. I don't, I don't like to see. A neighbor or hear them from my porch <laughs> have I been up to Rochester lately no I haven't um, last time we went to Rochester I'm just trying to think because we did stop at Tom Walls and that's near Rochester that's exit 10 off 390 I remember going to Tom Walls with Mrs. O but I don't remember what we were doing up that way we did something up that way but uh, anyways as so, well yes oh you know I would never move to Florida uh, Florida is, that's way too hot for me. Uh, let's see. The OG Tom Walls. Yeah, is it the OG in Avon? Is that really like an original? Because that's the only Tom Walls I know. And, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where, if I stop at the Tom Walls, that's where we go, the Tom Walls in the Avon. So that's a good one. That's a big, that's a really big place. So if you guys aren't familiar with Tom Walls, it's a, you know, it's a burger joint, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's star designed around a fifties diner type thing. So, you know, like smash burgers, really good, uh, for, for fast food. What's up blazer. I don't get your text blade or Buffalo. Hello, Eric gorilla. <laughs> um, Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I can't move to Florida because all that freedom would make my head explode. Yeah, I sure would. Gosh, we just got a bunch more stiffer gun laws. <laughs> and that's getting kind of crazy. I don't want to get in that because if people get all fired up. But uh, yeah, visit Hickok, Hickok 45 here. I like that guy. He's a nice guy. Uh, no, I don't own any SIGs. Hello from Texas. It's got to be just smoking hot in Texas. Um, have I gone to Bristol Mount? You used to go there skiing, sure. Yeah, Bristol and Swain, yep. Vinny's doing Vinny's doing all right. See, I just, we were talking about that earlier. He's doing okay, so he's all good. Um, let's see. Oh, Arizona is nice. I don't think Arizona is probably very nice. Well, I don't know. You could go to Flagstaff, right? Isn't that five, six thousand feet? Um, yeah, I think Flagstaff, Arizona, would probably be more my speed. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's where I'm at. That's that's my thoughts. Thoughts for the day. Uh, yeah, no, my boy Josh, he's still here. Uh, Kentucky has been on our list. <laughs> it's a dry heat. I don't care if it's 112 degrees out. I don't care if it's a dry heat or a wet heat. That's still going to smoke my lungs. I mean, it gets up to 90 here. I'm ready to puke. 
<laughs> my favorite part of New York is seeing the sign that said you're leaving. I hear that, dude. Ah, oh well. I gotta stick it out for a little while longer, folks, I'll tell you. Yep. This guy says say no to Kentucky. There's probably people that say yes and say no to every ways. I would like to get out of the salt belt, I'll tell you that much. Oh, I got a new sticker for my toolbox. I thought that was pretty cool. Certified zip tie mechanic. I got that. I bought that one the other day. I said, oh, that's cute. Gotta have to get that. <laughs> what else did I got? I got another one. I don't know where I put it. It says everything is figure outable. I'll show you. That's kind of a funny one. Oh, I don't know how to flip this thing around. Push the button here, fella. Where is it? Oh, yeah, that one right there. Everything's figure outable. That's my guy. That's Malcolm from uh, How to Barbecue Right. He's my guy. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> switch around here, fella. There we go. Get you back in business here. Yeah, I should move to a state like that nobody's heard of, like, you know, North Dakota or something. I don't think anybody lives there. That sounds like a great place. See, even this guy says he's been to every state except the Dakotas. That's because there's nothing to see there. It's probably a great place to live. Is anybody in the chat here? There's 2,500 people here. I bet nobody is from the, any of the Dakotas, north or south or east or west. Oh, wait a minute. We got a South Dakota guy in his house. Yep, where is it? Where is that fella? Zunar, J5-9. He said he's from the Dakota. But, uh, oh, you got another guy, North Dakota. So we got both people. We got one from North Dakota and one from South Dakota. So that's, that's both people that live there. I don't know. Sounds like it's probably a nice place. Oh, how did that meet Miss Lowe? Back in school. That's a long story, Mike. I think I've, uh, I think I've told that before. Hey, there's another guy from North Dakota. Well, look at that. I don't know nothing. <laughs> yep, I didn't think anybody was was from there, but perhaps I'm wrong. You just don't hear of anything really going bad there. I don't think. Am I bald? I'm not bald. I got lots of hair. I got a thick head of white hair. Yeah, Miss, she has a sweetheart. Um, oh, did I get my taste back? That's what Blazer wants to know. I did. Oddly enough, though. Some weird things have happened. So I, you know, way back in January, got the Rona, sick for a couple of days. But the the worst part about the whole deal was I lost my, um, I lost my taste and my smell for freaking two months, and it sucked. It wasn't, you know, not painful or anything. But you don't realize what it's like to have what perhaps some of you do. But when somebody says, "Oh, I lost my taste and lost my smell," you're like, "Oh, wow, that's great, whatever." But when you lose it and you, I mean, you don't taste nothing. It was terrible because I really enjoy eating. And when you can't taste anything, you just, you just eat for survival. So you don't eat ice cream. You don't eat donuts. You don't eat anything that's like bad for you because you can't taste nothing. So you eat a bunch of green stuff and, and that's it. You just eat a bunch of stuff that's good for you. And then finally, my taste started coming back a little bit at a time. Anyway, it's got it all back. Oddly enough, you want to know what's funny? Is there's two things that taste terrible. One is watermelon. I can't eat watermelon anymore. It is horrible. And I have tried, oh gosh, and Miss O buys it multiple, multiple times, you know, throughout the summer. Like at least once a week, we have watermelon. And uh, I can't taste it. Or I can taste it, but it tastes like I'm eating the rind. It is so terrible. And the other thing I can't eat is asparagus. And that was my favorite vegetable. And now it tastes terrible. It's very woody and just really uh, bitter. And it tastes terrible. So asparagus and watermelon. And that's disappointing because I really like both of them. And, um, and I've tried it for, you know, several months now. I've tried eating watermelon and asparagus. And it's awful. It's the only two things that taste funny to me. Everything else tastes fantastic, or is at least as good as good as it did. Um, but you know, Miss O will get some watermelon. Boy, it looks good, and it smells. I can smell it. Like, oh wow, she got watermelon. I smell it. 
I try to eat it and I'm like, oh, this is awful. And I'll ask her, like, is this thing any good? And, um, and she's like, oh yeah, it's wonderful. And I just, I can't do it. I'll take about two pieces of it. And I'm like, this is so terrible. So that's, that's the part that sucks. The other thing uh, that is interesting is I can't smell mouse urine out of all things. That's the only thing I know I can't smell because I'll get some cars in that are just, you know, they're just soaked with mouse piss and full of mice nests and stuff. And I can't smell them. I'll find the mouse nest and I'll be like, oh, and like one of the boys will walk by and be like, oh man, this thing stinks, you know, and I can't smell it. So it's really weird because I can smell the other things in the car. Like I can smell the people stink and you know, the dirty diapers and everything else that's in the car. But mm, I can't smell the mouse urine. So anyways, some other people are commenting about uh, that they can't hear. Is, is the audio screwed up at all? It's just curious because a couple of people have said that, but other people are saying it's fine. Yeah, audio is good. So I don't know, maybe it's on some other people's end. So I don't know. I'm just using my phone. But yeah, it is kind of weird. I can't, right, uh, Antonio? I mean, it's weird that I can't smell mouse urine. So, yeah, oh, yeah audio is good. So anyways, we're going to go with that. So I don't know. I don't know what happened there. That's what happens when you get your virus from China. They screw it up. So anyways, we survived. Hashtag survivor. And the only other uh, side effect I think I had of that for probably like, I don't know, a month maybe after I had the Rona is I got, uh, I had like, I would be like dizzy, like, Ugh. you know, like your head, your head, uh, you know, kind of vertigo -y. almost like you had like some kind of inner ear thing going on. And that hung around for a while. That was kind of annoying, but then that went away. So, but yeah, that felt like some kind of inner ear type infection type thing. But other than that, that's it. I need to put these things away. What's my favorite vehicle of all time? Anyone that starts and runs and drives and the tires aren't flat. I'm not a bald mechanic. Why do you guys keep saying I'm bald? Not bald. I do have a beard and I'm not bald. I luscious white hair. I'm a silver fox, as they say. That's what Mrs. O tells me. Um, let's see. How's my Jeep? Pretty good. It's parked out back. I haven't been driving a lot. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Blazer's answering a question for somebody. Uh, must be somebody asked about me being able to smell. Yeah, so you do use your sense of smell uh, in this trade. Particularly, particularly, when we're working on rusty crap because, you know, you bring in some toilet and let's say I've got a bust out torch, like, hey, we need to, you know, we need to put a muffler on it. If I can't smell gas, you know, now I've got to go get somebody. He's like, hey, can you, can you smell around this vehicle? Do you smell any gas, you know? Because, you know, I could have one in that doesn't have a visible leak, but let's say some piece of crap, you know, trailblazer and the top of the sending unit's leaking or some Silverado and that thing's leaking in the sending unit and, you know, all you smell is everything coming out of the EVAP system. Not, not picking on Chevrolets, but they're the gas leakers we get to come in. And, you know, they can be new, 9s, 10s, 11s, 12s, you know, and they're leaking gas, but you don't smell it because it's all on top of the tank. That can be dangerous for me. So, you know, when I couldn't smell gas... I'd have to go get one of the boys or get Mrs. O to say, hey, you know, does this thing, this thing smell like gas? So, uh, here's my two bits for the entertainment and knowledge. Glad you don't charge shop rate for it. <laughs> I don't charge anything for it, Keen. Uh, just appreciate it. Um, but yeah, don't, don't everybody ever feel obligated to give a super chat there and everything there. Uh, what's our average gas price? It went down. I think it's like 260 or 270 a gallon now for gas. So... Yep. Uh, yeah, snow on a chimney doesn't mean there ain't no fire down below. That's right. <laughs> Where do I get my palm ratchet from? You mean like, I got I only have one palm ratchet. This one? Like this one? That's a snap-on one. So, I don't know what the part number is. So, that's the one I like. That's the one I use. 
Oh, it's 419, 465 plus here. Yeah, I think it's pretty much four or five dollars all the way around. Uh, they had some, I think it was over a couple weekends ago, they had some E85 that they were selling pretty cheap, but. Yep. Yeah, five dollars. Uh, let's see. Is the crown keeping rust off my Tundra? Started using it last year. Yeah, no, the crown and uh, fluid film are fantastic, man. I've I've got to do that sometime. I got to get my truck in so you guys can, um, can see it and you can, um, you know, look underneath it there because I I don't know. I don't think I yeah I haven't done it yet this year. Um, I'm not super religious about like you know this time every year because oftentimes if I have it in for an oil change. And I see some dry spots because I drive it through a lot of fields. So driving through, you know, tall grass, it does have a tendency to really polish up the bottom of the truck. So if I have it in for an oil change, I just give it a little spritz there. 353. No, ours is at 270. I, I didn't say 270. It's like four 450 to 470, somewhere in there. No, I'm sorry if I misspoke. No, it's not 270. It's, you know, four and a half to 475. Depends on where you go. So sorry if I... Sorry if I misinterpreted that. No, you cannot put E85 in a regular gas engine. Not even close. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, Ivan's in here? It says Pine Hollow. Oh, there he is. No, it's not 270 per gallon. I didn't, I didn't. If I said that, Ivan, I, uh, I must have screwed up. So, sorry. Sorry if I got people excited. Don't move to the PRNY because the gas isn't cheap. Yeah, 455 at a Boca Marathon today. So somebody must have looked that up on the internet. Yeah, I think it was four, four fifty, four sixty. I don't know. It's a hundred bucks to fill up the Tundra. That's all I know. And if you go down and get diesel fuel for the lawnmower, that's freaking thirty-five dollars to fill up a five-gallon can. So, so that kind of sucks. Where are my T-handle nut drivers from? I get asked that a lot. These are uh, they're from Top Tool. That's who makes these. I'll find one. I gotta find one that still has the labels on it here. There we go. The nine millimeter, the one you'd never use. Uh, yeah, they're made by Top Tool. Uh, fantastic bit of kit. It's uh, they come out of Taiwan. I think it's a European company. But uh, Top Tool makes some fantastic tools. Absolutely fantastic tools. If they uh, if Top Tool was in the U.S., they would absolutely cripple some of the big companies here. Uh, their screwdrivers are fantastic. Their sockets are amazing. Their wrenches are great. So, yeah, if you find top tool stuff, I don't know if you can find it online. I knew a guy that used to sell it. So, think about that. Good stuff. You got you guys my personal opinion. Yeah, so Ivan's got some top tool wrenches, must be. The wrenches are great. They make some really high quality tools. So, I have several different types of, of uh, top tool wrenches. But uh, anyhow, yeah, that's that's that. So yeah, top tool. Be sure to check them out sometime. Poke, poke around online. There might be a guy that sells them. Uh, but I do believe uh, that they come from Taiwan. But I think they're a European European company. You can find them. Oh, Amazon sells top tool. Yeah, yeah. They if you find their stuff, uh, don't be shy. Even if it looks if it looks cheap, so to speak, or inexpensive. Uh, I think they make some really good quality stuff. You know, same thing with Astro. You know, they make some, they just make some fantastic tools and they're pretty inexpensive. So, yeah, I wish gas was 270 again myself. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, top tools from Poland. Hey, that's my, that's the motherland where I come from. Polski, huh? Um, oops. Uh, let's see, class only get you so far. I have years of experience. Uh, yeah, but don't uh, don't skip out on training. I mean, training is great. Uh, I really miss out on training, and I'll be honest with you, these past couple years, I have missed out a lot, and I have not taken advantage of the online training from multiple places uh, that have had it because once you know, once it was too dangerous to go outside and all that stuff. They started posting everything online and then there was no more in-person training and then you know that whole thing got stupid so then i just i don't know just ignorant i guess i didn't uh i didn't follow up with anything i didn't i, I hate online training i hate zoom 
the whole all this fake shit we have in our world is stupid online classrooms and stuff it's just it's so obnoxious and it gets me so pumped up that i just can't do it so i've just elected to not further my training anymore using the online stuff that sounds really stupid and because at some point i'm gonna have to and just accept it and that's just the way the world is but i really like the in-person stuff and you know that's starting up again now and uh but i do miss that and of course now there's all these restrictions and all that kind of stuff so it's just it's just the world we live in but you know i can't go to new york city because i don't have the the keys to the city or whatever because you can't go anywhere unless you got the backs and all that stuff i'm not going to get into all that but there was some good training and stuff down there and so i would love to go to more in-person training stuff but the online stuff just i don't know it's just kind of boring to me so i do enjoy uh, i do enjoy the training but I do miss it. I do miss the in-person stuff. So, yeah, anyhow, I think I missed something here. We're mad at my guys. Miss working on a 68 Firebird. Something said, no computers, no emissions. Uh, yeah, amen to that, right? Yeah, and YouTube videos, like Ivan said, are the best training. There's a there's a lot of great stuff on, on YouTube. Like, you watch Ivan's videos, I mean, case studies, you know? Case studies are fantastic, and that's what I really like. And even going to... Um, you know, going to the uh, live seminars and live training events and stuff, whether it was, you know, ATG or CTI or any of those, when they used to be able to have real people that weren't scared of everything, you could do all that stuff. And it was awesome because the case studies and the interaction you would have with, you know, other techs and stuff, that was great. And that's where, that's where you learn a lot, you know. Um, and that's where, like, you know, channels like Ivan's and Scanner Danner's and, and all the other, you know, great YouTube uh, tax that's where it's great because they're putting out case studies and that's where you get to learn like that's you can take what you've learned and you can apply it and you can see it you know IRL and uh, that means in real life and you get to see it like oh wow you know that's a good thing you know he had a substituted load on that because he would have got screwed on his on his meter uh, you know if he did it another way or you know this is just really good stuff and that, that's what I like another crusty Broken wire, fine investigation. Oh, those are your favorites, Stephen? Well, we do plenty of hunting down the broken wires, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what it is with broken wires, but they always uh, they always seem to find me out. <laughs> it's always bad ground. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, we can look at something, we can say it's a bad ground, but you got to know, you got to know how to find it. You got to know how to, you know, how to hunt it down. What's going to be your process? How are you going to break down the system? So... Yeah, yeah. So like Ivan said, he loves case studies with the interaction because it really gets your brain thinking. And it's nice too, uh, I think Ivan will agree, is to see other people's approach. And that's that to me is super valuable, you know, because I'll, I'll watch Ivan fix something on his channel and I'll see where he's going with it. And in my mind, I've already made up like, you know, what I would do next. And it's interesting to see like what Ivan does. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes we take the same exact path, you know, and that happens you know, more often than not, but then sometimes he'll do something because he thought about it in a different way than I did. And I'm like, oh, you know what? That worked out great. Would we have derived at the same answer? You know, more than likely. Did he get to it faster? Yeah, he did. And that was because of, you know, critical thinking skills and just, you know, being an analytical thinker and being able to just, you know, process it, you know, plan the work and then work the plan. You know, he would come up with, you know, a test plan. Here's what we're going to do. We check it and it's, you know, yay or nay. And then you move on from there. But that data you gathered, whether it gave you the answer or not, you know, dictated your next step. And, you know, that's that's the part that's, you know, useful. And that's something that's really fun to talk to other guys about, other like-minded, you know, guys who are fixing stuff. So, yeah, for what it's worth, I guess it's a lot of, lot of jibber-jabber. Uh, yeah, take me skydiving. I don't think so, dude. If I ever get in a plane, I sure ain't gonna jump out of it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> That's the short answer. You know, I'll stop by and say hi, but yeah, we're not jumping out of a plane. Anybody that has a helicopter, though, I would love to ride in a helicopter. Uh, only if you know how to do auto rotation, though. You're gonna have to prove it to me. Uh, favorite brand of tractor, orange, green, blue, or red? I own an orange, a green, and a red one. So you choose. My favorite one's my green one, but that's because it's the biggest and the newest. 
Um, I do like my Kubota, but uh, I'm a, I like my John Deere, but I really love my I love my farm all. I like them all, I guess. So, oh yeah, if you guys don't know Ivan, he's in the chat here. Uh, scroll up there, you'll find it. Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Uh, obviously, go over and subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of great, a uh, lot of great case studies. So. Yep, really, really in-depth stuff. Uh, big on the no parts required. <laughs> so that's where we get that from. If we're ever joking over here on our channel doing an NPR fix, that's from Ivan because he can fix everything with this stuff. A little bit of WD-40, I ain't lying. If you guys know Ivan, you know that that fella can fix anything with WD-40 and some zip ties. <laughs> so... But no, good dude, super smart, way beyond my capabilities, I'll tell you that much. Um, let's see, flashback. He loved the sender replacement on the Plymouth Prowler without a team designing an aluminum chassis. Oh, no kidding, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I forgot, yeah, we did do a video on the Plymouth Prowler. Yeah, that fella there, I don't remember what it was, it had a bad fuel pump or the gas gauge didn't work or something there. Um, yeah, I don't remember, but I remember doing that, and that was interesting. So, no, I haven't seen any twisted camshafts lately, Ivan. That was one of mine and Ivan's OG videos way back in the day with a Hyundai that was out of time but in time on the belts where the camshaft, the bearings had chewed it up and actually moved the camshaft. It was pretty interesting, and that was one of mine and Ivan's, Ivan's and myself's first interaction in, in working together, you know, as he stopped by to visit, and that's the way it was. We started talking. This is where the bromance began, and we started talking about it. And you know, I told him, I'm like, dude, this thing's you know, this thing's pissing me off. I can't figure out what's going on with this car. And you know, he is down here on his motorcycle, want to take a look at it. So, borrowed the scanner, you know, borrowed my scanner, went out, looked at it, and we started, you know, talking about it. And you know, come inside and just started getting after it, and uh, we're able to figure out what was wrong with it. And it was, it was pretty cool. Um, I don't believe we did, I don't believe we used the in cylinder pressure transducer on that. Uh, but through through deduction, uh, relative compression, I think it was, which started leading us to the rear bank. And um, yeah, yeah, Moto Yam, that's right, man. That was back in the day. So some of you guys remember that. But um, so yeah, that was mine and Ivan's like real first uh, case study we did. Of course, done some other stuff together, you know, down in New York City or down there in Staten Island with Keith. And he went down to visit Keith a lot. And, and uh, you know, just a lot of fun. And it's really great hanging out with guys like that. And that's that's the best kind of training you can have right there, my guy. So, that's it. Um, <laughs> you guys remember, that's right. So, anything else uh, we got there? Uh, I've been seeing some crazy problems on newer Hyundai. Oh, yeah. The only, the only thing I've been seeing on new Hyundai Kia is just the stupid leaking oil pressure sensors they still have. Yeah, Scanner Danner has a lot of great, uh, uh, a lot of great uh, content, too. Of course, I think he's got a lot of stuff over on his professional side and you know has his training material and stuff and if you're new uh if you're new to the automotive stuff and you want to get some training he's got some practical stuff because he takes the the engineering flow charts and you know uses them to start fires with too so he's going to be a guy who's you know teaches on a professional level you know teaches in a in a classroom setting knows how to how to teach and uh, articulate his speech in such a way that people can learn from him you know uh he has a, he has his own book out and you know video series that follow the books and you know he's a good a good resource uh particularly if, if you're new and you don't know you don't know a lot and you want you know want to be mentored but you know perhaps where you work you don't have a good mentor so yeah it is too bad keith moved away that was the holy grail for training ground and for stupid cars uh with stupid problems uh just some of the worst cars I've ever seen were down there in Staten Island. Just like, I can't believe this is actually how this thing is broke. And how did this happen? You know, so. Yep. Uh, yeah. So anyways, yeah, check out Scanner Danner. You guys can see him. Uh, like I say, they're, they're great people. Him and um, uh, Ivan, you know, himself are, you know, great. And in that regards, as far as you want to go on, you want to see some good case studies, you want to learn some stuff, you know, way, way better than the crap that, uh, you know, that you see on yeah, on our channel because we just have some plain Jane, you know, broken wires. We don't really do a lot of super, super technical stuff. 
Come here, kitty, kitty. Come here. Luna's awake. She's over there meowing. So, do I still have the honeycomb dream? Don't even bring that up. <laughs> Come on. Come here, kitty, kitty. Oh, Luna's coming out here. She just woke up. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come here. Clap. So here's Luna. She always needs a lot of snuggling. So she's a, she's a good kitty, huh, Luna? Yeah, but she's awful needy. Uh, you want to say hi to the people? There's Luna. She's a shop cat. But she likes to, she likes to have hugging. So, but uh, yeah, and I'm not just trying to single out, um, you know, Ivan and, and Scanner Danner as being the only good, you know, mechanics on YouTube. There's, uh, there's lots of great mechanics on there. You guys can see a lot of them coming through the chat. You know, uh, Rain Man Ray and Watch West Work. And I'm going to forget some. I hate naming YouTube mechanics because I, I always forget some. Ford Boss Me. Um, you guys will read them in the, in the comments. Um, Keith over at L1 Auto Diagnostic. He does great. Diagnose Dan. I mean, there are so many uh, really good auto, or YouTube, uh, you know, YouTube mechanics. So, I... Because I don't want to be disrespectful and miss somebody, I'm going to stop naming names. The Go Tech, uh, so Mike over there at NGK, Ford Tech, Make You Loco, yeah. Zip Ties and Bias Plus. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know about that channel as far as <laughs> as far as being good, but uh, yeah, old Peg over there, uh, good channel, kind of funny channel, but I don't know how much automotive knowledge you're going to get. Um, but uh, yeah, there's so many. You know, you got Scotty Kilmer. I mean, thank him. That guy's a legend. Mario, Super Mario Auto Diagnostics. Again, Scotty Kilmer. But, uh, yeah, Garage 54. Do I still have the, uh, yeah, Super Mario, man. That guy's getting solid on some Euro stuff. Uh, he's a really great Euro guy. Um, do I still have the Load Pro Wheel Chalk? I sure do. Uh, I actually got a letter from that guy the other day. I'll tell you about that sometime, Ivan. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Scotty is a legend in his own mind. But um, yeah, the, yeah, you got the car wizard. You know, he's Hoovy's uh, Hoovy's garages mechanic there. And uh, where is he at? Down in Kansas, isn't he? I think that's where he's from. Uh, oh, yeah, Auto Omega. Yeah. <laughs> Do more videos on Luna. I don't know. She, she's in quite a few videos. She's usually, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. The homie Hector, White Script Garage. Mr. Subaru, there's there's a ton of people. Um, do I still have the Eric the Car Guy welded ball joint? You bet I do. <laughs> yeah, Wichita, Kansas. That's right. Okay, he's in, he is in Kansas. I thought he was. So, <laughs> yeah, you got the Vice Grip Garage. Do I use fluid film inside my plow plugs? You bet I do. I use fluid film and peanut butter. There's stuff I call peanut butter. We can go look at my snow plow if you want. I'll show you what I use in it. So I use some groat. Uh, or Grody, I don't know how you say it, Gro Ultra Seal. So it's the old school stuff, uh, old school electrical grease. I call it peanut butter. You guys have seen it probably in, you know, bulb connections and stuff like that. I'm getting something scooped up there with there. Oh, man. These old broken Q-tips. So this stuff's kind of, kind of slimy and translucent. You know, it kind of looks like that. Kind of, kind of thick. So I use this in electrical connectors, like on seven pole connectors, seven pole RV connectors on your, on your trailer plug. Um, I also use fluid film. And we can, we can go out and do a live, live check on the snow plow and see where. Uh... Come here, Luna. Come here, kitty, kitty. Come here. Where are you going? You gonna go mouse hunting? Um, let's see here. Oops. What the heck? My door's like. Chevy Thunder. So I do use it in uh, in these connectors. And this has been sitting out here, yeah. So you see, this one is full of water from the rain. But you know that connector is still nice. And we use it on the big. Oh, see, this one's full of water. Dump the water out of it. And that one's still nice. So I use a uh, fluid film in there and whatnot. I might have to stick them in a different fashion because if that didn't have anything in it and they were filled up with water like this from sitting outside, then uh, I mean, you know as well as I do, it'd be junk. And then the same thing on the truck, you know, on the other half. Uh, 
There we go. Get that so I have to fix them up. Bam. Ah, uh, crap. And then usually I spray down the whole frame with fluid film. Now I've sprayed this down last year and I just, I never clean it off. I just put fluid film on it and just leave it on it. So it's kind of slimy. But you can see, I mean, it stays really good. But of course, this is stainless. The moldboard is stainless also. So, but anyhow, I do it on the front of my truck too. Yeah, I know I need to make them hang upright, but even the plugs on the front of the truck, I mean, they've, you know, I use fluid film in these and uh, peanut butter. Yeah, that one has water in it too, so yeah, you can see it dumps the water out of it. But regardless, they stay nice and clean. So I won't bother showing the other one because consensus says 75% of them are good. But yeah, fluid film is not a sponsor. Let me flip this thing around. There we go. So yeah, to answer that question, I do use the fluid film in them. So is it pothole season? It is. Uh, fluid film will conduct. Well, it doesn't really matter if it does conduct because it's not conducting the 200 amps it takes to run that motor. So... <laughs> No, I don't mean real peanut butter. We were talking about this stuff. We just call it peanut butter because that's what it looks like. So, yeah, Toyota Thunder. <laughs> but, yeah, we've been on this thing for quite some time. Uh, probably ought to. Well, I'll figure, figure I'm getting going here. Going to upgrade to the hybrid Thunder? No, no, sir. Shop tour? There's not really much... <coughs> Choking out a peanut. <coughs> Woo! Oh my god. Um, yeah, no, there's not. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I need some of this. Just kidding. There's not much to see. Um, what are you doing, kitty? Woo, there we go. I'm doing better now. Oh, thanks, Piston. Slack. Is that what he says? Piston Shack. Right on, my guy. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really need to do a shop tour. There's, I mean, you guys have seen it just in the videos. My shop's pretty small, so it's just, uh, you know, a couple bays, a back room, and another big bay. And that's it. So, um, how come no lawnmower outside? It did rain, didn't it? Yeah, well, the lawnmower is inside. There's one. There's a lot. The lawnmower out back there. That's the lawnmower we use to pull cars in with. That's the old Poolan Pro. So yeah, that's the one we use to pull uh, uh, take and pull cars in. So that thing works great. She'll pull an F250. I don't know how long the little rear end in that Poolan Pro is going to hold up. The motor's knocking pretty bad. But uh, yeah, no, I think pulls cars like a champ, and it sure beats. Um, it sure beats trying to push one in, you know, by hand. I'll tell you that. So, yeah, my boy Josh, he's doing good. A lot of people ask you. If you watch the whole live stream all over, you'll hear about it. Yeah, my boy Josh, he's doing good. Oh, is the neighbor mowing? Oh, he bought an electric mower. Uh, believe it or not, guys. So I was all excited. I hear my, I'm like, what is that noise outside? And, uh, you know, I hear this stuff. I'm like, oh, I was like, he bought an electric mower. He's got an electric push mower with headlights on it. And I hear him out there, um, I hear him out there mowing, and he's got an electric weed eater. And I'm like, man, this is great. He's got an electric weed eater and an electric lawnmower. And I'm like, oh, man, because he mows his lawn like three times a week. He likes to keep his lawn mowed. And I'll be damned, once a week he fires up the old gasser and goes out there and mows. I was like, and it seems to be every time I'm doing a video, I'm like, you got an electric mower, electric weed whacker, and you still kept the damn riding lawnmower. So I thought we were saved, you, the people. And, uh, but it has been quite a blessing because we've had no rain. So, hey, thanks, Steve. <laughs> and I'll keep being me. But we haven't had any rain, so, uh, so he hasn't had any grass to mow, so it's been fantastic. But, no, nope, he's still got the gas when he still whips that baby out about once a week. So, whatever. You'll still hear the mower in the background. But, yeah, he's got this green, uh, green uh, push mower with headlights. I, which I just think is interesting. I'm like, well, I don't know why the push mower has headlights on it. Maybe, maybe it indicates that the batteries are there. They use it for some kind of troubleshooting process or something. If something goes wrong with it, I don't know. 
It's a green one. I don't even know what kind it is, but it's green. So, yep. There's some HVAC people up in there. Who's up in here? Do I discourage customers from outside areas? What did he say? Oh my gosh. This silly thing. I don't know where the heck it went now. I was reading the guy's uh, comment here. Oh, message retracted. Oh, okay. He got rid of the message it says. Never mind. Um, <laughs> that's right, Blazer. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He knows what's up. Am I selling the car wash? No, I don't even own the car wash. When I get charged a disposal fee, is the EPA charging the shop? It depends on what you're, uh, what you're talking about as far as uh, we have to pay to get rid of our waste oil. We have to pay to get rid of our waste antifreeze. We have to pay to get rid of our tires. So if you're getting charged, um, you know, a disposal fee for that kind of stuff, then yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the shop's paying to get rid of it. Now here in the PRNY, by law, we legally have to accept waste oil and antifreeze, even if we have to pay to get rid of it. And that's just the way the law is because New York State likes to likes to give it to us fellas and that's the law we have to accept waste oil and waste antifreeze and we even have to have a sign thanks Kyle of a certain size of um, yeah a certain size and has to be visible from the sidewalk and a certain font and a serpent size saying that we accept waste oil at, at no charge so even, even if we have to pay to get rid of it, regardless of what we have to pay, if it was $50 a quart to get rid of, by law, I have to accept it from the general public. So, so that's that. Um, that's, how, that's how it works in the PRNY. But fortunately, well, I can't tell you what I do with my waste oil. We have to pay to get rid of it. We'll leave it at that. Sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut, like your mama says. Um, is that a tax write-off? I don't, I don't know. You'd have to ask our tax accountant lady. Yep. They paid me to get my waste oils. They used to. Uh, they used to uh, pay. They used to pay us for our waste oil. We used to get almost like a dollar and a half a gallon or something it was for the uh, uh, waste oil. And nobody buys the waste oil. So here's the thing. Um, here's the thing on the waste oil. So are there people around here that want to buy it? Is there a guy down the road that has a waste oil burner that would pay me a buck a gallon? Yeah, I'm sure there is. However, is it legal for me to sell it to him? No, it's not. Legally speaking, I couldn't sell it to the guy if I knew a guy down the street or up the street or down the road or across at some farms that burned waste oil that would pay me a dollar a gallon. Could I legally sell it to him? No, I couldn't. So because they don't have the permits and then here's the problem so let's say let's say i did know a guy or two or three guys that would pay me to take the waste oil and they came and we put it in 55 gallon drums and we put it in their truck and they took it let's say we did that hypothetically the problem with that is it's technically still my oil so they leave out down the road they're driving along and boom, somebody pulls out in front of them because they're busy texting on their phone. Bam, hit the brakes, the oil spills on the road, okay? Not a big deal. It gets cleaned up, but it's technically mine. So that's the dilemma, and that's where we have, um, let's say I do get rid of it to a, uh, a certified recycler. There's paperwork and stuff we fill out each time that takes the responsibility of it being my oil and turns it into their oil. As soon as it hits their truck, it's their responsibility. Now, not every waste oil hauler is like that. Some waste oil haulers, it's still my responsibility. If that truck, which is hauling, you know, several thousand gallons, gets into an accident and the oil spills, I still have some liability into that for the amount of oil that they took. So you have to read, if you have an oil recycler, that comes to your shop and picks up your oil, you have to, you know, you have to know yourself. You have to read, you have to read the fine print whether or not you're liable for that waste oil until it reaches its destination or not. So 
that's kind of how it is. So you're better off finding a guy who needs it and, you know, kind of a handshake backyard deal and just, you know, don't drive like a dipshit and put it in drums and adios muchachos. But honestly, we can't do that here. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he said, he didn't mean to retract it. Well, you did. And we're mad at you. Uh, he asked if I discourage customers who aren't local. Uh, I do, Venom, actually. Logistic, logistically, it never works. It's very difficult to deal with people from outside of our area. And uh, for multiple reasons. One being, there's nothing to do here. Uh, in, 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 a, in the town of Avoca, nice little town, great community, good people. But there is nothing to do here. There's nothing here and there's nothing around us. So if you're going to come hang out while I fix your car, there literally is nothing to do. Okay, you can sit and stare at the clouds, man. Because that's it, baby. Um, so that, that makes it difficult. Oftentimes people will call and want an appointment with an unrealistic expectation that I can fix it with a intermittent problem that happens, you know, once, you know, it happened one time, oh, my car did this one thing, or they think I'm some kind of automotive genius. And I've, and I've explained this before and I'm not, I am just a dude from upstate New York that fixes cars, puts them on YouTube. There are hundreds and thousands of people that are far beyond my capabilities in local shops that these people need to go visit. So I do discourage them. I guess to answer your question, I discourage people from out of town from coming to my shop. I don't like them coming here just because logistically it doesn't work. You bring your car here, you say, hey, we're gonna be here for a couple days. Okay, great. I look at it and whatever part you need, come here, kitty, kitty. I can't get the part, let's say for four or five days. Now what? Now you've wasted your entire drive to get here uh so you know so there's that aspect of it come here kitty kitty come here Luna. come on come on come on come here come here so there there's that aspect of it and then there's the issue of you know let's say you know let's say you did just bring your vehicle here for let's say you brought in your your honda you know, whatever, your Honda minivan and you just wanted a time belt water pump. So, you know, piece of cake, you know, boom, we bang that thing out in four or five hours. You're done. Everybody's happy. And let's say you're home and, you know, two months later, the water pump starts leaking. You know, now what? You know, now what are you going to do? You know, you drove six hours. I just put it on. Some fluke thing. You know, the water pump goes bad. You know, now what? You know, it's something I would easily cover under warranty, you know, no problem. You know, we'd send in a labor claim, we'd get it taken care of, but what are you gonna do when you're two states away? So it's just it's just easier to not to. Um, I know that sounds super stupid, but it's just it's just how it's just easier. So I hate I hate to say that. It's just easier. But yeah, anyways. So what do you think, Luna? Huh? Are you ready to go to sleep? Luna caught a mouse out here the other day. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was really great. Yeah, she so so that's what she's looking for right now. She keeps looking over in that corner of the shop. <laughs> she gave me a little what's up. <laughs> Give me a little what's up. Um, uh oh, Mrs. O just sent me a text. Speaking of animals. Oh boy. She said Weston just ate your dinner. Uh oh, must be my must be Vanessa left my plate on the. Uh, <laughs> you'll fend for yourself in your way home. <laughs> uh, yep. So Miss O just texted me. I think dog's in trouble now. Uh, Weston has a little bit of a problem because he stands yay tall and his head's about counter level. And sometimes if you ain't looking and you leave something there, he's usually really good about it. But the past week he's been kind of a naughty boy, and he steals stuff off the counter. He stole a whole piece of cake the other day, which equates to about a half a cake. It was a lemon blueberry cake that one of our friends made. That was fantastic. And it was on the counter and Mrs. O took a shower and she came out and she's like, did you eat that? Did you eat that? Pe no, he's our, he's our German shepherd, not our Husky. And uh, she's like, did you eat that piece of cake for breakfast? I'm like, no, I didn't. I was like, what cake? She's like, that half a cake that was here. And then She's asked me about it and she calls Weston over. He's like, Weston, she's like, did you eat this cake? And boy, you know, the, the ears go back and he kind of looked pretty shameful. And then she smelled his breath. And yeah, he ate half a cake. And now he just ate my dinner. So, anyways. Yeah, that's what he said, mmm, cake. 
But that's the problem when your head's this tall and you, know, you stick it over the counter. So, yeah, the ice cream store is on the way home. So I'll probably have to eat there. Go to a burger joint. I'm not a big fast food fan, but I do like me some Wendy's. Oh, we got a new KFC in Bath. And that's right, we got a Kentucky Fried Chicken. The closest one before that was in Elmira. And the only time we would, I would have some KFC every once in a while because we'd be in Elmira. I'm like, oh man, KFC. We never get KFC. But now we have a KFC in Bath. And I was so excited because it's brand new. It was a lemon blueberry cake. Uh, really good. Um, but we had a, uh, we have a KFC now in Bath. And I was super excited. And yeah, KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I was like, sweet. I was like, can't wait for it to open. So I waited for it to open, and it just it just opened up like, I don't know, a month ago. And I was like, well, you don't want to be the first guy there because they got all that new stuff. You know, they got new fryers and new whatever else they have, new machinery. And you know, they didn't clean all the fuzzies and stuff out of it when the construction got done. So I figured, well, we'll let the place go for a week. We'll let them get all the dirt and the and the grease and metal chips and all that stuff out of the machines. And then, then I'll go there and, and try my Kentucky Fried Chicken. I was so excited. So the other day, I go there with my middle boy, Evan. We go there. Nobody's home, just me and him. I was like, hey, let's go, let's go to KFC and we'll get some KFC, man. I was so excited. So I went there, got some KFC, and was so disappointed. I was like, this sucks. I mean, it was so nasty. It just sucked. And I was so disappointed. I was like, because I was so excited and I waited for almost a whole month before I go there. And then I go there and it was such a big disappointment. I was like, I just threw it away and just left probably should have said something but unfortunately i think that's how it is so so that's it kfc in bath new york sucked it was cold the food is nasty and it's just the one in elmira was pretty good when i go there but I only go there a few times so i just really wanted like a good piece of fried chicken and i mean not that kfc is like where you go to get good fried chicken it's just it's the only fried chicken joint we have around. You know, we don't have a Chick-fil-A or a Popeye's or any of those. And I've never been to either one of those either. I've never been to Popeye's. I've never been to a Chick-fil-A. I think Chick-fil-A sells chicken, don't they? I would think. It's called Chick-fil-A. But I was so disappointed, man. I was super bummed out. So anyways, long story short, if I go to any fast food joint, I like to go to the Arby's because they have those euros, those Greek euros. Those are pretty good. Or they have the... Uh, at the Arby's, they have those sandwiches, um, the Market Fresh sandwiches. I like those things, the turkey bacon ranch one. That's one of my favorites from the Arby's. And then the Greek gyros with the roast beef in it. I like those. And then um, and then if I go anywhere, if I go to a burger joint, I really like Five Guys, but that's all the way to the mall. That's all the way almost to Elmira. That's one of my favorite fast food is Five Guys. And if I have to go to another burger joint, a normal one is at Wendy's. I'll go get a Wendy's, you know, a Dave's Double or something. That's that's my favorite thing from the Wendy's. So, but other than that, don't eat a lot of fast food. Back in the day, man, I used to eat burger like before I was married and when I was working for my dad, me and my buddy Rick that worked there, we would go to Burger King like <sighs> every day for lunch, man. We would do because you could get double cheeseburgers for a dollar, and uh, you know I had to buy stuff like lotto tickets and cigarettes so <laughs> so you're we in for a cheap meal and uh you know i didn't have mrs o to make me make me lunch and stuff like that so that's what i did that was burger king we always went to burger king get a couple double cheeseburgers yep a water burger i've never been to a water burger um yeah 45 years old he's never been to wendy's something about a square but that's good man go go to wendy's 45 years old and you've never been to a Wendy's? Um, oh, they use pickle brine on their chicken. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, dude, you got to go to a Wendy's if you've never been to a Wendy's. You're not living, man. There's the square burgers. They're just fine. They taste good. Um, yeah, I like five guys. Don't, don't clip that the wrong way. Around here, I don't, maybe you guys don't have a five guys, but they're a burger joint. Uh, I don't know if they're just in New York or the East Coast or whatever, but the Five Guys Burger Joint, that's a good place. I guess it sounds kind of funny if I just say I like Five Guys. <laughs> I like Five Guys and one other dude. <laughs> oh, okay, he's got them in, the, in Ma, wherever Ma is. Uh, they got Five Guys in Ohio. Okay, good, so it's not just a weirdo thing here in New York. Oh, he got them in Arizona. 
in a mess. Our fair city. Ma. Yep. Five Guys, South Carolina. Oh, okay, good. Good. That's what I like to hear. But we don't eat out a lot of fast food stuff because we cook pretty much everything. But it sounds like my dog ate my dinner, so I'm going to have to be eating some heartburn in a bag, I suppose. Yeah, our fair city. That's from Click and Clack, you know. You guys don't click and clack, the Taffet brothers. Don't drive like my brother. Who, who, do you guys still listen to, does anybody, uh oh, reconnecting. Um, does anybody go on to the uh, internet there and watch any of the old uh, click and clack, the Taffet brothers on Car Talk, NPR Radio? Because this guy does. And uh, also, they're the voices on uh, one of my favorite shows, Cars. Yep, I love that show. That's a great show. It's fun. Yeah, I love uh, I love Click and Clack. This guy says it's his dad's favorite show. Yeah. Little Tommy. Uh, do I have you kept using the Astro 1834? Yeah, I sure do. Still got it right here in my box. But anyhow, it's been a couple hours. I told Mrs. O it's going to be on for about an hour. So we've been on for two, so I'm keeping <laughs> keeping up with that. So I do, I do need to get rolling, my guys, and uh, get heading home and uh, find out when my dog ate my dinner and get something else on the way home. Decisions. Probably just go home and make something. But before I do that, why don't you guys head in that comment section? <laughs> I, I think we have one. Yeah, there is one on here. So, yeah, we got the comment section, the questions, the comments, the NST, the Facebook. And uh, thanks for hanging around, guys. Thanks for all the super chats and, and being super awesome subscribers. And listen to me ramble. I'm going to try to do some more of the uh, the live streams, more of the What's Up Wednesdays. Things have been a little crazy, and and, that, and that's why we haven't. But I know it's been a long time, so so I think I'm going to hit up the Wendy's on the way home, and you guys hit up the comment section. And, and again, just you know, thanks for thanks for hanging out. It's uh, helpful to me more than you guys know uh, to see your you know all your feedback, and I love reading the comments. Uh, on the videos, I try to try to put little hearts on them, stuff like that. Let you guys know I got some got some heart stuff going on, and I try to read them all. But sometimes in these chats, it's pretty tough. So I apologize if I don't get to you know get to your questions or get to your thing. But I try to read them as they come across here as best as I can. But I'm just one dude. So anyhow, thanks again, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you guys around on the flip side. And I don't I don't know how to turn this thing off, so. I'm going to fidget here to try to turn it off and, and just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. So, thanks for watching.